After you've connected to Google Suggest, Google Suggest will send you back text that is actually JavaScript you're expected to execute. The way you execute that is to grab that JavaScript from the response text property of the XML HTTP request object. This expression is going to yield JavaScript you're expected to execute. That's the way you actually connect to Google Suggest, and you execute that JavaScript using the JavaScript eval method, as you see there. This is going to be this response text JavaScript is going to hold a call to, this is the function you're expected to implement, send RPC done. And these are the parameters that are passed to you as well. And so this is the function you have to implement in your JavaScript in order to interact with the text sent back to you from Google Suggest. And this is sort of standard implementation of send RPC done. We're going to loop over the matches that were sent back to you from Google Suggest. They're stored in an array called array results. And what we're going to do is simply construct an HTML table. As you see here, looping over the array results array and storing each search term in a different table cell. That gives you the result as you see here. This is actually, this text is actually a, an HTML table and it's displayed as you see holding the a hyperlink to each term and the number of results that Google Suggest found. This is how the hyperlinks are created inside that table and you loop over each item like that as you see there and use the array results array in order to create the HTML table and the array term is the actual search term. The array results shows how many results there are and then you end the table like this and you're able to display the finally display the table in that target div like this. This is actually this table is actually displayed in the target div. It looks like a drop-down list box, but it's actually just displayed in the target div element, which you see here, which is created right after the text field. There's the text field, then there's the div element right after it. And so when you display your matching search terms inside that div element, it looks like a drop-down list box. The last item that you should know about is that the div element is given and this example is given a certain style so that it looks like a drop down list box and not just a white not just a white background the background color is set there as you see and the width of the drop down div element is set to 40% of the entire browser width like that and so there it's styled so that the div element will stand out like that as you see there so that's the end result and it's very nice. It's a little involved how you use Ajax to connect to Google Suggest, but as you can see, a very powerful addition to any web application. The only remaining point is, we're going to be discussing that in the next segment, the next movie. The only remaining point is, why do we have to use Google.php? Why did you have to connect to not just, not just Google.html? Why did you have to use Google.php. In other words, why did we have to not call Google Suggest directly from this Ajax application, but why did we have to go through the intermediary of Google.php in order to read the data and the response text from Google Suggest? That's coming up in the next movie. That's a very important point about Ajax having to do with connecting to a different domain safely, but as you see, that does complete the, that completes the example. It's a very nice one, and it's a nice addition to any web application, being able to search Google like that, displaying matches to partial search terms.